Hey guys, Gambling CS here with another knife review. This is the Cutmaster USCG. Now, this is a pretty interesting knife. It's one of the other old ones that I got. Um, it also came along with the, the Sea Scout knife uh, from my prior review, the uh, Ulst uh, Ulster Dwight Divine and Sons knife, the Sea Scout knife. Uh, this one is pretty interesting in that it has uh, wood handles. I believe they're oak, but they're so aged that <laughs> I really can't tell. It's almost a giant chunk of black wood. Um, and you get some color on that one. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a very interesting knife. Uh, what you have here is, uh, like I said, oak handles with a, a very strange combination of uh, steel pins, or excuse, yeah, steel pins and brass pins, which I found really kind of interesting. Uh, it has a lanyard loop like the other knife, and has no lanyard hole. Uh, the bolster is uh, steel as well, and it has a copper copper liners inside with uh, no flow through design. So it is a uh, it is a, another kind of hefty knife, though with these wood scales, it is actually cutting out a lot of the light, uh, weight. So uh, it's it's about a medium weight for right now. Now I personally have a red uh, paracord lanyard on here with just a little end knot in here. It's just uh, anything to pull out of the pocket. Okay, uh, let's see. Open the blade. It is a slip joint, but it does have uh, a pretty pretty solid click in there. Um, now this one is also a full flat grind and another mariner's or sheep foot blade. Uh, it's very long, very thin, and uh, because it is full ground, it cuts incredibly well and it's incredibly easy to sharpen. Uh, this one also was <laughs> soaked in that box for 20 some odd years, so uh, I had to put a forced patina on there. Or, well, I forced a patina on there to keep the rust off, and it went a little heavy. Uh, the you can see that uh, it doesn't come up very well, but it says Cutmaster, uh, the USCG that stands for U.S. Coast Guard, I do believe. Uh, uh, this box I got was from my grandfather, and he happened to be in the Marines and had a whole bunch of buddies in each one, each one of the branches. So they all kind of stockpiled knives after he uh, he uh, started collecting them, and he they he happened to accumulate all of them, and this is I believe one of them. Uh, this one, uh, as it says, is from the Coast Guard, and the number right underneath uh, approved USCG is 1994-736. I believe that's the date and the, the serial number for the actual knife. And Cutmaster Utica, New York City. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's a uh, U-T-I-C-A, I believe it is. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, it is carbon steel, which is rather handy and keeps a nice blade. Uh, but one thing I have found that is very interesting about this is the width of the blade actually varies a bit. Um, you could, if I angle this here, it's very thin around this area and then kind of widens out at the tip. You can kind of see that. It's very, very thin stock and it cuts rope incredibly well. I mean, uh, whenever I teach out at my, uh, my scout ranch, um, this is the knife I have with me when I'm cutting rope, you know, 10 hours a day. Even when it's dull, it still cuts in incredibly well, and uh, it's really nice. However, because it's so old and because of the th incredibly thin stock, I mean, this is this is one sixteenth inch stock, and then this cuts down to about, mm, yeah, it, it just about one. In, uh, let me get my ruler actually. Let's see that blade stock. Yeah, it's still about one sixteenth. And then at the wider part, eh, it's like three thirty seconds or something. Anyway, it's very thin, uh, but it cuts incredibly well because of how thin that is. I mean, this thing barely took a second bubble. Uh, now you could, if I get that blade in focus, there is a bit of a divot right here. You kind of see an angle change. Now, what I believe uh, originally it was a full, it was a full line. It was a flat line. However, it might have gotten dinged, and someone tried getting that out with a sharpener and just kind of created two different angles. I personally care for that more because I can actually put two different angles on this blade and kind of has two blades, which I really like. Uh, what I normally do, though, with this kind of style, is uh, have a 30 degree, or excuse me, a 20 degree line on the upper half, which cuts incredibly well, and then I save the lower half for very fine work, so I put that around 17 or 15, and uh, it cuts really well. Um, 
like I said, slip joint, so you might want to be careful about that. It does not fold down all the way. This is as close as it's going to get, which is kind of weird in my opinion, but it's really nice and gives you a good purchase whenever you're opening it up. Um, so, ooh, there we go. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Let me get some paper and I'll... Oh, oh. Nope, nope, that is not it. Right there, you have the divot. It is the small choil that they use. Uh, helps keep the sharpening there. It's like I said in the prior video that uh, it keeps it from having that kind of odd spot where you can't really get it all that sharp and it just kind of makes a very strange curved angle into the blade. Uh, it's just a, a nice little additive that they had in there. And i uh, got some paper here. Let's do some paper cutting tests. Nope. I guess it wasn't as sharp as I thought. There we go. Ah, okay. There we go. You know what? It's just kind of failing on me. So, um, yeah. But well, take my word for it. Uh, it actually is a pretty decent edge. I just have bad luck right now. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and please subscribe.